Earlier this year, Brazil passed the United Kingdom as the world's sixth largest economy. But for all of its size, the South American nation still has its problems. And for more on Brazil, we're joined by Mick Shammy. He's Global Head of Emerging Markets Research at RBC Capital Markets. And it's nice to meet you, Nick. Thank you for having me. Well, let's go through Brazil here. Economy growing at an average of 4% 4 over five years, reaching 7.5% growth in 2010. Looks like it's uh, all systems firing ahead. Uh, what's driving it? Well, Brazil has a number of many positive uh, tailwinds uh, helping to put it onto a higher growth plane these last few years. In particular, of course, higher commodity prices internationally have helped to boost its trade and given it a nice wealth effect. As well, at the same time, capital has been rushing into emerging markets and Brazil is traditionally a large recipient of those inflows. So uh, for Brazil, uh, there's uh, a very accommodative global backdrop which has helped to lift Brazil. And then very many years ago, back in the 1990s, they undertook a number of painful reforms, which has helped to uh, make a break with the past, with their very volatile and unstable past. And Brazil has been um, uh, one of the best performing economies in the world. Which countries are its main trading partners? Uh, primarily China, US, rest of Latin America, and Europe. OK, so firing on all cylinders for quite a long time, very robust growth rates, and then all of a sudden, 2.7% last year, not expected to go above 2% this year. That's right. What's going on? Well, I think uh, in many ways, the momentum that Brazil engineered for itself, again, with the uh, painful reforms it undertook about 10 or 15 years ago, have been spent. And unfortunately, little progress has been made in some of the underlying uh, headwinds that Brazil faces. A number of its structural deficiencies that it needs to work on haven't been addressed recently and they've been living I think a little bit on borrowed time. Uh, they've seen lending growth expand very quickly, domestic uh, credit and household debt has been growing very quickly and this has helped to keep the economy afloat but as you alluded to growth has slowed dramatically uh, in part of course dri driven by the slower global backdrop and Brazil in order to get to the next uh, uh, level for growth really needs to undertake another round of painful reforms. Before we get to that, uh, how enmeshed is it in all of what's going on in the Eurozone right now? Uh, not very much. Uh, certainly uh, China has overtaken everybody else as being Brazil's number one trading partner. It eked out the U.S. A, a couple of years ago. So really it's, it's a two or three horse race. It's between China, the U.S. and the rest of Latin America as the primary trade drivers. They say that in China, if you don't get 8% growth rate, you're in trouble because you need 8% a year just to tread water. What's that number for Brazil? Uh, I would say that Brazil's proper run rate should be somewhere between 35 and 4%. Anything below that really should be considered sub-trend and sub-potential. So they are clearly falling behind if you're at 2%. Right. What are the ramifications of that? Well, I think more broadly, um, in the very immediate term, Brazil has the financial resources, the wherewithal to see itself through a very extended period of time. It had built up significant savings in the form of FX reserves, foreign exchange reserves. But moving forward, if it hopes to generate enough jobs on a sustainable basis to keep the unemployment rate low and to reduce the, the ranks of uh, the poor, it really needs to get back to 4% growth. Okay. Let's in its effort to do that, look at some of these numbers, and I want to have you interpret these numbers for us. Uh, we pointed out already, it's the world's sixth largest economy now, but how about doing business in Brazil on a rank out of 183 countries? In terms of paying taxes, they're at 150. Dealing with construction permits, 127th. Trading across borders, 121st. Starting a business, 120th. Enforcing contracts, 118th. Registering property, 114th. All of these statistics uh, courtesy of the World Bank, and there they are overall at 126. What do you infer from those numbers? Uh, that's wo uh, one of the main things that Brazil needs to deal with uh, if it's going to get its house in order for, for long-term sustainable growth. Um, the ease with which to do business in Brazil isn't the, the best, as you alluded to. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the administrative nightmares uh, for both domestic and foreign investors to start up a business, to grow their business, are, are very, very large. Um, Brazilian business often complains about the complexities with regards to getting permits and building their business. What's, whole, what's the stumbling block here? Well, I think the public sector has grown tremendously in Brazil. There's several layers of government, each looking to, to involve itself in every aspect of the economy. And um, 
after several decades of growing the public sector, they really require a restructuring in terms of um, how they deal with the private sector, how they get out of the way of business, and allow that business to flourish. Well, what do you like uh, putting the odds at for somebody to be able to come in there and, for lack of a better expression, knocking some heads together so it's a little easier to do business there? Um, it certainly um, hasn't been getting any better recently. I would expect that it's going to have to uh, come down to some difficult political uh, decisions. Certainly with these last three governments having come from the PT, the Workers' Party, uh, they're much more uh, uh, leaning in favor of bigger government, of more government involvement in the economy. And unfortunately, that doesn't really uh, lend itself easily to uh, loosening the reins on the economy. How clean a country is it? And by that, I don't mean are the streets swept. I mean, you know, do you have to grease people to do business there? Uh, that I don't know firsthand. Clearly, there's uh, some of those concerns that are latent in some of those survey results that you alluded to. Uh, what I would suggest is that um, the size of the gov Brazilian government and uh, the taxes that they impose on both households and corporations um, are a major bone of contention for, for the private sector. Let's uh, go to the World Economic Forum, which ranks Brazil's quality of infrastructure 104th out of 142 countries surveyed. What's wrong with it? Unfortunately, the Brazilian government hasn't been investing in infrastructure uh, to, the, to the degree um, that they need to in order to keep growth uh, above 4%. And that comes down to a certain degree to their fiscal prudence. They've been running a very tight ship with regards to government expenditures, and they've pared back their deficit. Their debt is at very sustainable levels. But unfortunately, a lot of that has come at the expense of the public sector's infrastructure investment, and they need to find ways, more inventive ways, of maybe engaging the private sector in increasing infrastructure investment and improving the roads and the ports. Uh, again, major issues for business there. So more public-private partnerships, that kind of thing? That's what they've alluded to in their most recent announcements, and we expect to hear more on that front in the coming weeks. So if I were to say to you, infrastructure in Brazil is lousy because... A, B, C. What are, the, what are the three things you would point to to say, here's why it's falling off on right. that? Uh, insufficient f uh, infrastructure investment on the part of the government. But uh, in what? Well, uh, in, in I would particularly point out the ports, the railways, and the roads are um, uh, the, the three that are often most cited when I speak to business people so in is, Brazil. And this is a problem of getting goods to market or people around, or which is it? Uh, mostly goods. Uh, getting people around isn't great either, but um, uh, in terms of uh, using the existing railway system or the port system, uh, they're running at full capacity. They're not considered to be, in many ways, world class. And in, in many cases, companies have to build their own infrastructure, build their own ports, build their own railways just to get the goods around. That does not happen here. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, the cities, how electrified are they? Um, in the literal sense? Uh, I, I don't mean for tourism. <laughs> I mean, you know, when people f turn on the light switch, so the lights yeah. go on. Oh, no, they do. Um, the, the electricity sector is, <laughs> is largely government run uh, in Brazil. and. Um, they did have some problems with some blackouts a few years ago, but as I understand it, those have been resolved. Uh, but they do require significant investment in that area as well. Electricity costs are quite high in Brazil, and um, just a couple of weeks ago, the government announced a plan to try to reduce taxes on electricity and reduce those costs. There was a piece in Foreign Affairs magazine that said, Brazil has chosen to invest in its social welfare programs at the expense of productivity and growth. You agree with that? Uh, I do agree with that. I think they need to refocus some of their efforts with regards to creating uh, a higher plane for growth because without that then um, in the end employment will suffer and then they'll end up with more needs for more social spending. Uh, it, it, the, I think a preferable choice should be more private sector growth that can de deliver the, uh, the, the jobs that everybody needs. What's the role for the state then? I think the role for the state is to create the, the conditions that are conducive to seeing businesses grow, to making it easier to, to grow and start a business, for investment to come in and contribute to Brazil's growth. Um, I think a, a stronger reorientation to, to freer market principles is really what's needed. How about, but if you told us that, that they're at 2% growth this year and that they need to get you know, considerably higher than that, right? Maybe 50, even 
75 percent higher than that to get to a point where the, the country can move ahead. Uh, is there room for a government stimulus program to prime the economy? Uh, unfortunately, I think uh, history has shown that that tends to be a very temporary fix and doesn't produce lasting results. Uh, the lasting result comes from productivity growth. So all, any efforts that they can make at improving productivity growth, at reducing the cost of business, I, I think will produce the, uh, the long-lasting impact that they're looking for. Jim O'Neill from Goldman Sachs wrote a report a little over 10 years ago predicting that the so-called BRIC countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, would lead world economic growth for the next 50 years. Was he wrong? Uh, I, I'm not so sure that he's, he's been wrong thus far. Thus far, I think he's been largely uh, on the money. Um, from here, there's going to be quite a few dynamics at work that actually work to slow the growth of the BRICS alongside the rest of the world, uh, not least of which uh, the demographics in China. But alongside of that, the easy productivity gains have already been picked amongst uh, the BRIC countries. And there's a tougher uh, time ahead in terms of generating the organic productivity growth that they need in order to, to, to generate the growth that they're looking for. And everybody's expectations uh, in terms of seeing double digit uh, growth rates needs to come down because those days are, uh, have gone and global deleveraging has ensured that global growth is going to remain on a much lower plane. Demographically speaking, you know, of course, uh, Russia is an older country now, Canada, the United States, increasingly old countries, Japan, increasingly aging country. H how are they? Uh, Brazil stacks up quite well uh, in that regard. Their, uh, their population is still growing, um, uh, it, and they don't need the immigration to, to do that. Um, from that point of view, uh, their dependency ratio, the number of people who um, are outside of the labor force and who are dependent on those in the labor force, um, is not an onerous level and isn't expected to be. So I think from that point of view, Brazil actually has a, a leg up on many other countries. Is it still, I mean, these are anecdotal stories one hears, but pe people who go there say they love the people, they love the tourism, they love the sceneries, it's an incredible place to go visit. Crime is frightening. Do you hear that still? Yes, sure. Um, there, there needs to be a significant effort made. And the government has been in recent years to get a stronger handle on the crime situation, on organized crime. Um, I can tell you that I've been going to Brazil for many years now, and the situation has improved. But you're talking about a situation which has been developing for the last 500 years in Brazil from extreme poverty and all of the side effects from that, and it takes some time uh, to, um, to make a, a material dent. Have on you that been problem. a victim of crime in Brazil? No. You never have been? No. But you hear the stories as well. People come up sure. to other people and rip their purses or cut them or whatever, right? You hear sure. this all the time. And what, you know, in, Me in Mexico we understand that there's a drug war going on right now and that's why tens of thousands of people are being killed. W what's the source of it in Brazil? I think, the, I think extreme poverty amongst a very large portion of the population. And um, as I suggested earlier, I think the long-term sustainable solution is to see business grow, jobs grow, um, as opposed to uh, maybe a, a, a degraded um, priority around the social uh, spending that they're doing. Let me ask you a bit of an odd question about language, if I could. You know, Brazil is this, you know, it's this little piece of Portugal in the middle of a huge hemisphere, which is mostly Spanish-speaking, of course, yes. even if you, as you get into the southern part of the United States. How, how have they managed to do as well as they have, given that they, quote-unquote, don't speak the language that anybody else within thousands of miles of them speak? Right. Uh, that's never been an impediment for them. One thing to remember is that Brazil, from the perspective of economic size, is about the size of the rest of Latin America combined, South America combined, I should say. Um, Population-wise, they're 200 million people nearly. Um, so from a center of power, center of gravity, economically and politically in Latin America, they are it. And they, s they very much see themselves as the entrepreneurs in the region, the, the, almost the Americans of the region. They're, they're quite aggressive. Um, in, 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 in business, in sports, in, in most aspects of life. And um, they're not lacking in any confidence. And they're, they're quite, uh, quite abled. The Olympics is going to be quite a coming out party, isn't it? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they've got a few years still to get ready for that. Right. Uh, it's good of you to join us today. Thanks, thanks so very much. Thank you for having me. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at tvo.org.